hello hello and welcome everybody hope you're having a great day and uh, today we are going to continue with our pathfinding journey fixes and stuff so <clears throat> uh so yeah i did uh some improvements of stream on the client side and i actually made um the movement queue uh, work properly so now we can send multiple points to the client side uh, for the npc movements and the the client will process them one by one which is awesome actually i forgot to include one more thing one sec sorry i forgot to reset the destination it was somewhere somewhere here you know you guys don't see that but uh it's a quick fix yeah like that so uh that was one improvement the other one is i improved the synchronization between the client and the server um so now the 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 npc position is much more accurate especially when they chase you and the the third improvement is um i improved the the position detection when the monster tries to attack you so now now it should feel much better but we still have a lot of fixes for the pathfinder itself so this is how it looks like right now so all the jittering is gone the npc movement is pretty smooth um there is one exception though that i forgot to to do while i while we're here let's do that so um where was that Rotate to spawn rotation, I think this one. No, maybe not this one. No, not this one. So for waypoint movements. For waypoint movements, uh, hello, Dull Dark. Hi, hi, hi. How are you doing today? So, yeah, we have this waypoint rotate. So this thing basically rotates. Oh, congrats on the star. Uh, this basically rotates. I mean, this is weird. One second. Rotation at end. Rotation. Oh, crap. Yeah. So basically, for each waypoint that we described to describe for the NPC path, uh, we have a rotation assigned and I wanted to I wanted to like make it only work when we have some wait time just uh, this um, set for the waypoint because otherwise we don't really need that rotation but this looks to be much more complex you're fine good good yeah I'm fine too so many works what what do you mean so this action actually extends just the rotate action it re-implements the rotation method hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's not very easy to get rid of this rotation. We could make this property return not just the rotator, but make it um, nullable. And if it returns null, then we fail. Probably this is what I need to do. So this rotate method to have this rotation, which should be nullable. And then here, here, no, wait. So if it doesn't have value, then we return failure. Right. Still, I'm still not very used to the Vim motions. So if I want to change this rotation to just the rotation um, variable. So change, no, this is V, change inner word rotation. No, not only that, rotation value like that. So now we point rotate needs to be changed. And this can now return null. This can return null. And here, oh wait, ah, no, 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 everything's good, everything's good. So here we check if waypoint has weight at end. No, 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 if it doesn't, How do I change one symbol rather replace it by two? Like that with the uh, visual mode. Okay. So if it's zero, then we return null. Otherwise, we return the rotation. Okay, good. And we need to fix this. This should be a very easy fix. Again, this can be. And now, okay, we're good. So now all the jerking should be gone completely. Let me double check that. Oh, there is something else. Rotate to target. Yeah. Oops.
But yeah, what I did on the client side is basically, uh, yeah, first of all, we have the movement queue. So now the server can send multiple points one after another. Hello, Ninyasan. How are you doing? That was a little bit weird. Oh, it fails. It fails, right. Head is still a little heavy. Yeah, I hope you feel better soon. Yeah, now the rotation can fail. So now that the rotation can fail, we need to detect all the rotation actions. So this one, for example, in the default idle behavior, rotate to spawn rotation. Yeah, we need to wrap all these with, uh, how is the, how is the decorator called? Oops. Return of success. Okay, so this should be changed to new return of success. Guess we don't really care about the rotation itself. We just need this thing. Oops. Then here, this is return state, yeah. Okay, so that's done. Don't like that I don't have the the search reference history. Okay, we go back to rotate, find all references. So we fixed that one, rotate to target. This needs to be fixed as well. Maintain desired combat range. This, this is actually fine. We can file here. Good. Uh, now back to rotate. Waypoint rotate. Now we need to fix this one. Okay, we should be good. Uh, let's double check again. So we check the rotate, rotate to spawn, rotate to target, rotate to waypoint. Okay, we should be fine. Where are all my other tabs though? I have a bunch of tabs open. No, I don't. 
Oh crap. I remember now I have tab limit. Okay. But okay, this is fixed. This is not needed. Data target. That's fine. So these are default. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything should be good. So let's check now. So now I need to actually open the files. Um, need the move to position. That was doing it. Crap, we still have the rotation though. Why? Oh crap, I think I know why, because we do need to stop at the end of which waypoint. So we do need to rotate. Oh my god. So we need to get rid of this, actually. Mm. Well, I still gonna, I'm still gonna leave this optional rotator because it makes sense when we can fail. It's just, yeah, we do need to rotate at the end of the waypoint because we are actually stopping there. And starting again, so yeah, it is what it is. But yeah, we don't have any rotation glitches uh, on the intermediate points, and we don't really care how many uh, path nodes we have now. So that's good. But yeah, the main thing is now even very fast monsters like wolves their movement is now much much better and also the attack range is much better so let's take a look So now the client actually resyncs uh, the monster when it's uh, too far away from the server coordinates. Actually, maybe I need to change that threshold. Basically, right now I've set it to 300 units. So if the client uh, position is greater than 300 units away from what the server has sent, uh, then the client basically teleports the monster to the actual position now. Yeah, maybe I need to decrease that a little bit. It's just, I'm not sure yet how it's going to look like with high ping, because even though I did improve the synchronization, it's still a little bit bad because, uh, because of the way gravity designed this protocol. 
they don't have um, any indication of time or frames uh, on the movement packets. They are supposed to be real time. The problem is there is no such 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 thing as a real time um, event in MMORPG. It's always in the past because we have network delay. So we still cannot synchronize the movement perfectly and to do that perfectly we would have to completely redesign the movement protocol and implement a lot of features like frame synchronization uh, with the server which is not something that I'm looking forward to so for now we're gonna skip that but it already should feel much better uh, it's just yeah we would need to experiment a little bit with the network delay uh, on the real servers because right now I'm playing locally and locally it's ever everything looks good but yeah once we go live with this feature we will have to test more thoroughly and probably the monsters would teleport a lot so we will see how maybe we could improve that but yeah now the the obstacle avoidance is much much better So yeah, that looks good, but we still have problem, the same problem that we had uh, yesterday. So if we try to steer this monster around some hills, it's gonna get stuck eventually. Yeah, now it's stuck. Because uh, it, it went too far down below the nav mesh so yeah we need to fix that and I had some ideas so we have this nav mesh query filter I think no not this one nav mesh poly query this one so the problem is um, this set and max vertical distance basically makes it that we completely ignore all the nav meshes that are above um, our current position more than this distance which is not good uh, we need to ignore them only when we don't have any other suitable um, candidates so for example when we have enough mesh below and we can snap to it uh, we should use that instead so my idea was that maybe we can add another private variable above poly not to confuse with over poly over poly is the request term for being exactly on the polygon basically but yeah uh, we do this above poly actually we need three states here i think or maybe it should be a negative variable and sec so my idea was is when we detect that the polygon is too far above our coordinates then we mark it with this above poly 
we'll, we'll mark this this variable um, and we also see before doing that we see if we have some polygon detected wait th this is this is weird So for now, let's comment out this this check. Uh, we don't need that. So without this check, we basically assign all the polygons. So instead of doing that, so this marks that this is closer right the distance is closer than the nearest one and by default that's just the max of value for the float point uh, variable so first of all we need to set another variable so this above poly equals diff y more no diff y is less than 0 0.0 f so now we know if the polygon was below or above We need another check here. So am I correct if we're gonna do just or this above poly? No. Or no wait, we need to handle multiple conditions here. I think I need to write it down. So, uh, so right now we have only a single check. So if distance is smaller, assign the poly always. Now, um, There should be another case, but but skip if um, if above poly is false and you uh poly is above also no new poly is above so skip skip if uh, above poly is false and new poly is above actually this should be different skip if was not above and the new poly is above so we should ignore any polygons even when their distance is smaller 
when they are above this distance actually when they are above max vertical distance but this should be this should be here so Skip if previous poly was not above, and the new poly is above max max vertical distance. And here, if max if distance is smaller, or Our previous poly was above and current poly is below. something something like that so okay so first we need to redefine the above poly it's this condition so it's not only the y difference but it's the whole condition So this indicates that, uh, I don't know, wait, if this is less than zero and negative y is greater than max vertical distance. So if y is negative, difference y is negative, this, is mean, this means that the polygon is above our position uh, and when the, the negative of that negative distance is greater than max vertical distance, this means that not above poly, this is poly is above um, Can I invert it here? No, I can't. So yeah, this this should be like that. So our position is above poly, means that if the difference is greater than zero or negative distance is less than vertical poly distance. Okay, so we are above poly. So if previous one, skip if previous poly was not above, the new poly is above. Actually, th th this one is not correct, but okay. Um, if not above and this above poly then we skip right I'm struggling with um catching the stars
Skip far point is too far below Pale. Too far below Pale, and we already have found. Okay, so we did that. So if distance is smaller, our previous poly was above grand poly is below. Again, th th this is not the correct description, but uh, okay. If distance is smaller or or we are above poly and previous position was not above poly. So all that works. So for example, uh, let's say that we have, this is our first point that we check, first polygon that we check, and it's, let's say, above our cells. So we are below poly. Oh, this is an incorrect naming, but okay. So we are below the polygon, too far below. So this will be false. This will be false. So above poly is false. Yeah, we are not above poly at the moment. So not above poly and this above poly is false. So okay, we proceed next. Then the distance is smaller. Uh, we assign the distance, okay. We assign the above poly to false. So it stays false, right? Then next query, next query, we are doing uh, next, next query, I mean, uh, next polygon, we're processing the next polygon. Let's say the next polygon is uh, below our current point and we can snap to it. So we do vertical distance is greater than uh, zero. So it means above poly is true. Then this fails. Distance, let's say this one fails. Let's say we have uh, a point far below, but then we check here above poly is true and not above poly then we reassign okay 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 good um let's say our next polygon is closer and it's also below so above poly will be true this fails distance is less Okay, this, this can be a sign. Okay, what if we already have a point? Then we process a point above, the polygon above. So above poly would be false. So if not above poly, but this is true, then we just skip. Okay, this, this, this should theoretically work. So let's test that.
So what I'm aiming to do is we accept any polygons that are above our uh, maximum distance when we don't have better candidates. When we receive better candidate, even if, if it's further away, but it's like below our current position that we should reassign that one. And if we have just a single candidate uh, that is too far above, we should snap to that one. So let's let's go check. So nav mesh. We get snapped to the nav mesh below. Okay. Let's move up a little bit. Still below. Here. Still we are snapping below. And this snaps above. Okay, good. This gets snapped below, below, above. If we stand exactly above, then it's above. Okay, good. Good. If we go, if we stand right here, it should be the only position. Snaps below, okay. If we stand here, below, we should still snap to the upper polygon right here. Yes. And right here. Maybe we need to decrease this range a little bit. Because we're still snapping to that one. We are still snapping to that one. Now we go below. Okay, should be good. Uh, now let me try if I go below. 40 to 52. Oh, it snaps to there. Oh, to there. Okay. Mm. Probably printer is not a very good testing point here. Actually, if I go here there should be only a single one so okay here we snapped below the ground okay 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 i think it works We can get rid of that. And let's test now the monster. So let's see, can we make it stuck again? Make it get stuck, I mean. Okay, looks good so far. The aggro. Okay, this looks good. Huh? <laughs> 
Yeah, I don't think it's getting stuck anymore. So that's that's perfect. Okay. We fixed that. That's that's awesome. But yeah, we also have another problem. I'm not sure what that one about. Uh, hello, slot boss. Oh, hi, how are you doing? The project is going well. Blurking a while. Eat my morning bagel. Bon appetit. Um, yeah, the project is going well. It's just, yeah, I'm fighting a lot of uh, weird bugs that reappear. Or rather, they keep appearing again and again. New bugs, but... Yeah. I think we are good. But yeah. Uh, I've noticed today another problem. This monster should... Um, trigger the return state. Because it cannot reach me. It cannot attack me. But it's just stuck now there. It's not returning. So that's weird. Not sure what can be wrong here. Let's actually test another thing. If we bring back our normal spawns. And we test on the mouse that we tested previously. Will that one trigger the return state? So yeah, now we need to go to the culvert. To the previous spot that we used to test the return state. Because I think we did break something. Not sure how and why, but... I need to test. And if we didn't break, then we need to improve, because in that case, um, the wolf has to trigger the return state. And it doesn't. So. Let's see, what if we attack this red? Yeah, it was not doing that before, it was not shaking like that. And I don't think it's triggering the return state anymore. So yeah, we did break something. We did break something. So what could that be? I need to see the path here that we're trying to rebuild
How did we detect that the path is unreachable? Path count is zero. Hello, Dark Terminus. How are you doing? What are you trying to start? Yeah, we should have an empty path. I think, but maybe not. So let's see. I know what, I know why. Because we're supposed to skip the first one, the first node. And we don't anymore, so this is why. But okay, I need to test <coughs> test that properly. So to do that, we need to isolate this spawn. Start the avatar thing with the start. Yeah, you, you just need to type anything in the chat and uh, your avatar will, will appear. Because, yeah, we only show the people who actively type in something in the chat. We don't want to expose the lurkers. Oh my god, why is it so slow? Come on. Come on, okay, here we go. Let's load, <coughs> let's load the monsters. And we need to isolate this single rat. Don't remember what test categories we're already using, so let's do test four. Hopefully that's good enough. Oops, I forgot to recompile. But yeah, by the way, we can start something with uh, uh, stream avatars is just I'm not sure how it's gonna work. I never did that before. But maybe we can start a boss fight. Um, so yeah, if you want to try to fight a stream avatar boss, type exclamation point join and then the the class that you want to use. I'm going to try, I don't know, priest. Oh, uh, join, not join. Okay. You can type exclamation point join and then the class name. And we can try and fight the boss. Maybe no one wants to. Maybe I need to increase the timer a little bit. <laughs> Looks like I'm gonna fight alone with the NPCs. Okay, basically this is how it's supposed to, to look like. So, uh, let's see. What kind of problem do we have here?
Yeah, we have a single path node. Mm. Yeah, you're too late. Unfortunately, it did start pretty pretty quickly. Maybe I need to increase the timer. Actually, I'm gonna reset stream avatars a little bit uh, real quick. Um, one second. Mini games, boss battle, giant timer. Let's do. Um, so right now we have one minute. Let's do, I don't know, three minutes. Should be 180, yeah. Let's try that. But yeah, if you guys want to try to fight the stream avatar's boss, please type exclamation point join and uh, then the, the class that you choose. The list of the classes um, are in the message above. The ranger, druid, bard, necromancer, priest, mage and warrior. <clears throat> So yeah, looks like um, the monster is stuck because we have this this position. That we for some reason keep seeing. What is the transform position then? So our transfer position is this one. Wait. Are those identical or not? Those are identical. Ah. Uh, we then skip the final point, right? Why? Why don't we skip the final point? I think we need to skip it, even if it's the final point. Okay, <clears throat> the boss fight starts. Let's see. Uh, smite. Okay, what if we comment out this block? Would that help?
Yeah, each class has separate abilities. You don't have smite, I don't think. Okay, so now we our path should fail and so the monster should return. Yes, that works now. Okay. Where are my commands? Hello? Oh. Okay, let's see. Do we still have the problem with... Um, Uh, with the wolf up on the rock. Yes, now it returns. Good. So we fixed that, but now we need to check all the pathfinding because I don't remember why I added this condition to, s to skip everything except the final destination. This bus fight is a little bit weird. What is that bot? Bot 2, I think. I'm gonna try to heal bot 2. Calls. Actually, let's do focus. Screw the bots. So, we need to do some more testing. Okay. 
So let's start with just a normal running away stuff. Okay, this looks okay so far. Let's try running around this thing. stuck. Okay, so this looks good. Let's check Prantera. Get how do I... Uh, crap, I didn't notice that we are almost dead. Crap, I'm a bad healer. <laughs> I'm gonna heal myself. <clears throat> so let's test uh, the pathfinding around the statue. Was it tr uh, test number three or a different one? I don't remember. Okay. It's a shame that I don't have the test NPC we had that that was going through the through the um, oh my god through the building. Because that was uh, that one was pretty laggy. I wanted to test how that looks like now. It's okay. At least this one is okay. So this works. Let's try to bring back all the spawns. And now we need to do. A good thorough test. Wait.
Dent restart. Overlaid event. So, first of all, let's try and test this long distance thing. Okay, it goes the long way, that's good. Okay, good. I didn't mean to attack it, now it's gonna follow me. But that's also a good test, I guess. So if I go down there... We'll try to find the path down. But that's another thing that we need to see if we can improve. Uh, we need to make the monsters jump down. But not up. Okay, so um, what would be the next test? Let's test the fish monsters. Because that one can technically break if we did something wrong. Because that's a pretty special pathfinding. Not the usual one. First of all, let's see the stars actually walking on the seabed, that's good. Let's try to aggro one. Okay, good, it cannot reach me, so it should reset in a moment. I'm not gonna attack it anymore. Yeah, now it's resetting. Yeah, we still have this weird client side bug with the monsters refusing to basically travel too quickly. That That's weird. Uh, but that's another story. Let's see, what if we aggro this crab? Oh, that one is too far away. Okay, this is good. Now let's try the fish. The fish is already looking good. They're actually floating. Tries to run away, that's also good. Uh, let's go try uh, with the tuna on the pier. Oh, actually, first we need to spawn it. Uh, over here, I guess. 52? Yes, 52. Good. Uh, 
So first of all, we need to see if they actually follow follow me in 3D space. Yes, looks like it. Now it should stay in the water. Good. It should trigger the return state in a moment because it cannot reach me. Okay. It took a little while, but yeah, that works. Again, they're teleporting for some reason. But that's fine, that's definitely the client side bug. Oh, it was still returning. Now let's try to attack it from here. Yeah, it stays there. If we go to this side should follow. Nice. Now it should reset in a moment. Good. Again, it's teleporting during reset. Weird, but it's fine. It's fine. So, uh, what else do we need to test? I think we're actually good. Oh, one thing that I wanted to test is monster skills. So for example, on Raipuku, they should heal themselves. And that should stop the monster briefly. Okay, good. So yeah, the movement actually looks good. Crap, I killed it, I wanted to start running away. Let's try to trigger that. Oh my god, I'm just trying for that. Oh, how can I trigger one of them to run away? It's gonna be a, a hard task. Uh, let's just go to outside of Prantera and let's just aggro some some rabbits, bonbons.
Yeah, now they are getting stuck a little bit on the tree roots, but as soon as they get too far away from the server location, the client now just teleports them. So we don't have now these hard desyncs that we had. They need more testing. They need to try to run away from me. Okay, that looks good. But yeah, um, yesterday we detected uh, a problem when the monster can go below the nav mesh. So, for example, if we load. If we load um, maps F03, we load the nav mesh. So yeah, one of the big problems was when we go from here to there, for example, uh, and we just build a straight path, this path can sometimes go below the nav mesh because we don't have any intermediate points. Uh, so I tried to investigate um, more about this move along surface method. It looks fine, but yeah, with this method we would have to just build the path in fixed intervals. It's actually fine, that could work. We don't have any jerking uh, in the movement anymore when the monster um, reaches one of the points in the path. But yeah, I don't really want to do that. Uh, because that would complicate the way we build the path a lot. So first of all, we would need to integrate into this method. Actually, this is incorrect. And this is incorrect. So I need to test the monsters now with this command, with this option. So this is incorrect because we need to use this array. Not this is not an array. Um, this is a list. To sit, you can just execute the sit command, not sit loop. Why are you trying to execute sit loop? Is it something that the um, the stream avatars panel does for you, or why? <laughs> can you just sit like that. It's 
So, uh, yeah, this now should be better. So technically we can do it here. Like we can try to detect uh, the distance between the current position and the previous position. And if it's too far away, then we create some incremental points using this um, move along surface method. But I don't really think we need that. Because now we don't have the problem with the monsters getting stuck when they go below the nav mesh. So normally the wolf will would just get stuck here, but now uh, that we have our filter properly configured, we will snap the wolf up to the nav mesh and that would fix it. And you are trying to figure out what it does. The panel has a couple of commands, though it doesn't send it to the chat as it as it should, I guess. So I have to type it on my own. Uh, the panel should th theoretically execute commands um, directly to the stream avatars uh, without entering the commands in the chat. So if you like click jump there, like the up arrow in the controls, uh, your character would just jump without typing the jump command. So, I don't know. But where did you find this sit underscore loop command? Because stream avatars did introduce the new uh, like sit loop sequence, animation sequence. Um, but it shouldn't like consider this as a command. It should just do that automatically. Basically, they uh, introduced in one of the recent updates. They introduced separate sit loop and uh, sit underscore loop loop. Uh, hello, SKM. How are you doing? on the panel, so here already when I first came here, huh, it's on the panel, let me take a look, do I have that on my panel? Doesn't want to work for me, like at all. Oh, here it is. Okay. Actions. Hmm. For me, the chat. Oh, I see. Sit underscore loop button. Oh. I don't know. Yeah, there is a button and it doesn't work. Weird. Uh, 
boss. Uh, yeah, I'm going. I can start the boss. Sure. So yeah, I'm going to start the boss again. Uh, as soon as I do that, if you want to join, please type exclamation point join and then the uh, the class that you want to use. So yeah, you can choose between ranger, druid, bard, necromancer, priest, mage, and warrior. Gonna do another priest. So yeah, uh, okay, good. Uh, there is now a dagger class. You can see the list of the classes above. Ranger, Druid, Bard, Necromancer, Priest, Mage, and Warrior. So you need to choose one of those. Maybe later I will be able to like configure the classes that we have in Emirheim, but it's it's weird. You basically have to configure all the skills for each of the classes, and that's that's a lot of work, I don't really want to do that. Yeah, maybe sometime in the future. So, yeah, I did change one thing. I did change this option, so we need to now test again. At least I want to see uh, Mr. Pit movements. Oh, I don't have the correct um, the correct spawns. Okay, the fight starts. Oh, looks like it randomizes the order. So now you see you need to pick uh, one of the commands. Vampirism. Poison Nova and Bones. Sun and Deal 7 physical. On damage to. What? Weird. No. Oh, you lost your turn. You just attacked normally, I guess. Okay, it broke the shield. Okay, when you see your name on, on screen and uh, the list of commands, you can use one of the commands. Otherwise, if I believe, uh, if I remember correctly, the character just does normal attack. Oh, maybe not normal attack, but some random skill. That's also good. Uh, 
Fuckus. Oh, nice. There are some passive skills in the Rangers. Why am I first again? What? That's weird. Why am I first again? Uh, smite. Yeah, I'm learning too. But yeah, basically when you see your character next to the boss and the list of commands, you can execute one of the commands. Otherwise, it looks like the character would just pick random skill. SKN, this is your turn. Yeah, the bat two is gonna die. <laughs> Don't think I will be able to heal him. Dull dark, your turn. You don't have fireball. You have bones. Why is another and vampirism? I think you you are too soon, Aninia. <laughs> you need to wait for your turn. Now you can uh, uh yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do. Oh, yeah, I can. Yeah, I see. The bots are gonna die though. Maybe not. We have some OE heal. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Why did it target me? <laughs> but okay. Minus healer. So you, you guys better finish it before you die. Great, my client crashed. Oh, you did it. Congrats. Ninety two damage. Nice.
Okay, let's see. Does it still look fine? Oh no. We have some glitch in here. Millions and of millions of dollars of damage here. Yeah. <laughs> millions of damage here. Um Problem is we still have a problem right here. And I think this is because Actually, I'm not sure why. Maybe just because they are so f so close to each other, those points. Uh, let me test that. Um, what if I comment out this whole block? Yeah, bus is funny. And it's fully customizable, so technically I can make bosses like i don't know in the ragnarok and line one can have different bosses but yeah that's a lot of work to to actually implement that yeah baphomet or something like that But it's not jerking there. Actually, I didn't check if it's uh, glitching in the previous settings. No, there is still some kind of weird problem. So it's not this, it's not this. Then probably we just don't have enough path nodes sent to the client, I think. Or on the client side, we also have uh, limitation of five units. Let me try to change that to one unit. All right, I need to close the editor as well.
trap. Okay, so then this doesn't really matter. Maybe we just don't have enough um, enough points sent to the client. Maybe that's the problem. I want to see the map. So yeah, we have a bunch of crossings right here. So when we build a path from there to here, straight path with all crossings. Yeah, we have a lot of points there. Right here. That's not good. Need for a case, any for a piggyback hat. <laughs> yeah, it is expensive. Well, it's a good hat though. <laughs> but yeah, 4K is not really, really like a lot. You will find, you will collect that in some time. So we have actually four points here really close to each other and that's causing us some, some problems. What we could do here and move to position, we can filter out the points that are close to the previous point. So here we check the distance to our current position. If it's too close, then we just skip. What we could also do No. How can we do that? Oh, actually, yes, it, it can be done like that, but we need additional, an additional uh, condition. So if I, no, not I, we need the previous path. If this path counts more than zero and Vector three distance squared from this path, uh, the last node. Oh, actually, we can't use that for the queue. Uh, element at count minus one position and uh, this intermediate path I position so if this distance is less than guess again 25 squared then we skip that position Would that work?
Oh, by the way, I need to update that so while I remember. I need to update this command. Okay, so it's not an undisclosed ID anymore. It's actually VS Code. And I'm going to remove the Visual Studio 2019. So let's see. That net core, yes, C sharp, libuv, postgres, liquid base, docker, Mariel 2.5, D3, D, C, MSVC 7.1, this code, beaver, git extensions, yes. Okay. Now it should be up to date. Okay, uh, did I restart? I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe actually I did. But yeah, now we should skip the points in the path that are too close to each other. So within 25 units, which is basically nothing. which is like 25 centimeters. A search for months. What, what do you mean? Wait. Ah, where you find the real engine 2.5. Well, depends on what you want to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't notice your message, sorry. So, uh... Basically, this is what Gravity used to build the game. I didn't, like, this This was not my initiative to use Unreal Engine 2.5. But yeah, technically Unreal Engine... Okay, that's good. Technically Unreal Engine 2 source code is not publicly available. We did have some jerk in there. That's weird. Is it consistent? Huh, maybe not. Yeah, sometimes it does shake a little bit. Um, so when we go from here to there. Yeah, I guess we have multiple points. Mm. They are indeed very close to each other, but should be fine. So there's multiple ways of solving this. First, we can, um, even instead of ignoring all the path nodes, we can just send multiple path nodes to the client instead of just one next path node. Another way would be to build a path in a different way. So 
back to this move along surface. We can actually try and use that. In that case, we can uh, use only area crossings here in the options, which is great. And then here, what we would need to do is to process one point. If it's not the first point, then we need to measure the distance between these two points. And if it's greater than, let's say, 1000 units, or what did we have in the terrain? Um, terrain collection. Here we also used some kind of uh, splitting. So we have direction, direction line, distance, max path segment length. Yeah, we used 1000. So if the distance is greater, so we can do something like that. But instead of trying, instead of using try normalize, we would call this function function move along surface, and that would actually create a nice path. Or we could just uh, normalize the z z coordinate of the position which we already do, technically, with this get poly height. It's just, I'm still not really sure what's the actual purpose of this move along surface. Looks like we do need to use it to build a nice path uh, that follows the actual curvature of the nav mesh. But it's just, it's, it's weird. Why don't we just interpolate the point and uh, just get the height? So this is how they use it. Um, first of all, they try to get uh, the position uh, I think it's this target position. No. Oh, so get steer target. So for this get steer target, we try to find a straight path, then the closest point in that path that's in the range, yeah, the closest straight path without any options. And that becomes our steering position, where we want to aim. Then we detect if it's the end of path or of mesh connection. And then this, this thing, this basically limits this uh, steer position. to the certain range. It's really weird. So we get the delta between our current position and the steering position. 
uh, we use we detect the length if the length is less than our step size and it's just one let me get this straight uh, realizing 2.5 is not available but you had access yes something like that Yeah, the real engine 2.5 is a very old engine that was not uh, open sourced. It was available only when you purchase a license. At least legally available only when you purchase a license. Let me say it that way. R. <laughs> okay, so we get the length. Then we basically, what does this do? Step size divided by length. I know, but basically this extrapolates. the position and then we use this ex extrapolated position and we uh, call move along surface so move along surface start position now start reference is our polygon that's actually ah oh, okay we update the polygons Yeah, it's not available anymore. It's it's not supported anymore. It's basically dead. But yeah, it's used uh, for Ragnarok line to the gate of the world. Epic Games would never sell you the license to Unreal Engine 2 anymore. They would just say that you can just use their Unreal Engine 4 or Unreal Engine 5, which is available and open source. And you can just start using it without paying anything. So why do we need this move along surface method If the only thing that it does is actually I'm not sure what it does because we have this extrapolated target. We don't know only the y coordinate. So this extrapolated target should already be on the line of path. Uh in the horizontal plane. It should be already valid. At least two components of this point. We only need the third component, the height. And this move along surface does not provide that height. It's it's low res uh, method call. Because here even uh, in this tool implementation, they do a separate call of get poly height on this result. Then assign that result height to the um, interposition. So th this is really weird. I'm not sure why we actually need this move along surface. I did it when I give commands to the author and he walks away. <laughs> yeah. It basically has some delay. This is why. This method is optimized for a small delta movement and a small number of polygons. It's used for too great a if used for too great a distance, the result set will form an incomplete path. Result path pause will equal to the end path. In 
here resolve position is not projected onto the surface of the navigation mesh use get poly height if this is needed so why the hell do i actually need this move along surface because it doesn't produce a path it produces a single point this result position well and also it returns this visited polygons but we don't need those so what does it actually do can we analyze it in the code oh my god th this is weird um but okay The tile and polyref. Collect vertices. Why do we need vertices of the polygon? Target is inside the polystop search. The hell? Find wall edges and find nearest point inside the walls. Find links to neighbors. Tile border wall edge. Calc distance. I don't understand this method at all. Space, best position. I have no idea. Why do we need to call this method if we can just extrapolate the point on a straight path? Not extrapolate, but actually interpolate the point between two straight path nodes. This makes no sense to me. Another thing that I try to investigate is this crowd module, crowd control module, but I don't think we can use it. Basically what it does is you supply uh, the list of agents, you configure their acceleration and maximum speed, um, you configure their position, and you set the target destination. And basically then you just run this crowd um, collection or what is what is called crowd object or manager um, and you retrieve the the result in positions the problem is they say uh, it's pretty expensive second biggest limitation revolves around the fact that the crowd manager deals with local plans so the turkish engine should never be more than 256 polygons away from the current position row fail no uh, the biggest limitation is that you must give control of the target's position completely over to crowd manager. So we wouldn't be able to use this move to position method at all. Because now the crowd control manager would calculate everything instead. 
You can embed things like maximum speed and acceleration, but in order for the crowd manager to do its thing, uh, it can't allow you to constantly ki be given to overrides to position and velocity. So I give up direct control over the agent's movement that belongs to the crowd. Uh, but that's that's technically okay. We can deal with these limitations. There is another limitation. Crowd manager is relatively expensive. The maximum ag agents under crowd management at any one time is between 20 and 25. The maximum agents under crowd management at any one time is between 20 and 30. A good place is to start uh, the maximum 25 agents for 0.5 milliseconds per frame. 0.5 milliseconds for 25 agents. Well, first of all, I'm not sure if there is a like a hard limitation on the amount of agents. I guess we can find that out. Crowd DT crowd. Yeah, this is the same documentation as we've seen just in the C docs. So let's check this constant. Maximum number of corners a crowd agent agent will look ahead in the path. This value is used for size and the crowd agent corner buffers. Next obstacle params. Like query filter type. Okay. Crowd config. Q size 32. Next pathfinder direct uh, iterations. So we supply the config, we supply the nav mesh and filter factory. Guess this integer is um, the ID of the agent. Now, this is filter types. Mm -hmm. So, list of agents is a list. Date agent parameters at agent. Do we have any limit here? Agent ID, atomic integer K. This is actually bad. This is already a problem that we cannot really overcome. So each time you add an agent to this crowd control manager, it generates the ID by just incrementing the number. The problem is we have uh, constantly respawning monsters. So monster dies, gets distracted, despawned, um, its session ID gets destroyed. And then uh, when it responds, we assign a new session ID 
from the pool of open session IDs, available session IDs. Uh, the problem is this thing doesn't have the pool of IDs, so when it reaches the final, uh, like the maximum number in, in this integer, it will just start over and it will just overwrite the existing ones. So each agent can have its own query filter type. Okay, that's good. At least that's good. Remove agent. So hey, we did assign the agent ID and this is just a list. So why do we need the ID even? So for each update time, get active agents, agents, K. An agent can have maximum of 32 neighbors. That's also bad. And that's hard coded. <laughs> and the documentation it says about the agent index, but you do supply the agent uh, object instead. So we would have to store the agent objects. Obstacle avoidance query. So probably even this ID on the agent level is not being used. No, it is being used. Handle collisions. Why do we need this index? 
edges on top of each other. So for every neighbor, now technically this is just to resolve um, the order. Okay, that's not very critical. So I don't think this ID, this index is being used anywhere except that. Well, this is just a sample tool, and this is also a, a tool. Yeah, this is the only place. So, okay, this is not the limitation, but still, one agent can have maximum 32 neighbors. That's already a hard limitation. So let me see, where was that? Where did I see that? Mesh connections, get neighbors. So for get neighbors, position, height, range. Skip this agent, I guess. Result and grid. Okay. Yeah, this is a big limitation. I don't think we can agree with that. Well, maybe that would just limit the amount of neighbors. That we consider for collisions, I don't know. This is weird. Here you go. <laughs> so check all agents have valid path. Date move request. Optimize path topology. Register agents on proximity grid. Max agent radius times three. Okay. Build neighbors, find corners, trigger off mesh connections. Yeah, yeah, this command. Uh, calculate steering. So for all the agents again. State walking, target none, update target velocity. So 
smooth or straight direction. Crowd anticipate turns. Anticipate turns, obstacle avoidance. What is anticipate turns? No documentation. Great. Uh, sure. Plan velocity. Integrate. What is that? Integrate. Fake dynamic constraint. What? Max delta. Delta movement, I guess. Distance. What? Handle collisions, move agents. Yeah, I don't think we can use this. This would basically mean that I would have to completely rewrite the way we handle uh, the NPC movements, and that would completely rely on this DT crowd which is not actually meant for big amount of NPCs. We, we can have hundreds, thousands of NPCs on a single map. So I would have to cram them all together in this crowd control manager, because otherwise I have no idea how to do that. Maybe we can somehow split them in chunks. Uh, for example, the process neighbors. But then we would have to keep dynamic lists of this crowd control and one agent can only be in a one separate crowd control manager. So I don't know. Don't think this is suitable for MMORPG. This is more like for a single player game when you have a few NPCs on screen and you just put them all in the crowd control manager. I would like to have some obstacle, not obstacle, but uh, crowd, how do you say it? Like crowd awareness for each NPC. So for example, they don't stack together. Uh, they don't just stand um, in one spot. But yeah, I don't think we can use this library, which is a bummer. So why the hell do we need this move along surface method? I just don't understand it. Here's being used in the crowd. That corridor move position. So moves the position from the current location to the desired location just in the corridor as needed to reflect the change. The movement is constrained to the surface of the navigation mesh. The corridor is automatically adjusted, shortened or lengthened in order to remain valid. The new position will be located in the adjusted corridors first Polygon. Expected use case is that the desired position will be near the current corridor. What is considered near depends on the local polygon density query search extends etc. The resulting position will differ from the desired position. If the desired position is not on the navigation mesh, or it can be reached using a local search. 
the resulting position will differ from the desired position. The desired position is not on the navigation mesh, where it can be reached using a local search. So for that, they use move along surface. So these two, two cases, if the resulting position is not on the navigation mesh, in our case, it will be on the navigation mesh. Right? Are there any cases where that could be false? Like from there to here, maybe. We build a straight path with only area crossings. Mm. Oh, I see. So if we go from here to there, oh no, the resulting straight path is actually okay. I see. So if we don't want to use this move along surface, we definitely cannot use just area crossings. We have to use all crossings, but that increases the amount of points. Which is not very good. I don't know. Move the target from the current location to the desired location, adjusting the corridor as needed to reflect the change. The movement is constrained to the surface of the novel mesh. Corridor is automatically adjusted in order to remain valid. The new target will be located in the adjusted corridor's last polygon. Expected to use cases that the desired, yeah, this is the same thing, just different parameters. Actually, no. The expected use case is that the desired target will be near the current corridor. What is considered near the path of the year. Ah, oh, this one updates the target, I see.
Then I have no idea how we can integrate that. And even if we should, probably we should. So right now, let's say, right now we use all cross. So our path is completely valid. It's the shortest path that it could find. It's just it contains a lot of points, basically all the polygon crossings. And sometimes that's bad because we have them crammed together and that um, makes the NPC movement a little bit weird. But still, this is a valid path with all the valid uh, height coordinates, which is great. Um, the only problem is these points. But yeah, I also have a second problem, uh, which is curved polygons, like hills. Like on this map, for example, we load the nav mesh. Here we have some curved polygons. And if we try to go from here to there, this is within the single polygon. Then we, if we use the straight path, it just goes below the polygon. The same is true if we try to go from, for example, from here to there, uh, it doesn't follow the curve, it lifts up. So that affects the speed and also in some manner the synchronization. So to solve this, we could use the uh, the follow path. That would solve that. We would only need to build this straight path with only area crossings. And then we try to interpolate. Let's do that. Let's do that. We can do something like this. just instead of normalizing the position instead of normalizing the position we will call that method first of all let me save what I currently have so I So I can revert easily. So now what we can do, we build this straight path. Uh, we use area crossings. So now we are going for each node. Get the height. So 
So here in between, uh, in between actually adding the node, uh, we should check the distance. So for example, if I is not zero, so it's at least the second point. If I is not zero, um, then I try to calculate the distance between the previous point and this next point. I need the last position. Actually, we can do that pretty easily. Last position equals start position. We don't need this check. Actually, well, let's let's have it. So here, if Need something like that. Let's copy this. Why can't I? What the hell? Here we go. So last position is this one, two is this position. So direction is <coughs> current position, uh, new position minus last position. We have the distance. Next segment line, we will just hard code for now. distance is less or equal to 1000, then we break. We don't need to do any intermediate paths. Otherwise we create a new waypoint. Let's rename that to interposition, which is last plus direction divided by the distance times max segment length, which is 1000 F. What's wrong? You didn't implement that. Wow. Oh my God. Direction divided by distance. Bah. Now this is subtract. Why is this subtract? There is no division operator. Ah, why do you do this? There is a multiplication, but no division. 
Okay, maybe we can just use LERP. <laughs> What's going on? <clears throat> so what do we need? We need to interpolate the position, right? Um, Twin last position and the new position. Well, there is actually already an implementation for that. I've seen that. This one. Yeah, we basically need to do something like that. So steer position minus enter. No, this is steer position. Gets steer target. Ah, oh, this is the final fit. Okay. I'll throw with the best better to the amount extension. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um Yeah, this vector is bad, really bad, but okay. Direction divided by distance. This is basically a normalization. Okay. So this minus this, we already did that. This is our uh, distance, our delta. This is our length, okay. But we need to execute this, okay, I see. Such a bad implementation, I, I just can't. So, Our waypoint, not waypoint, interposition should be recast vector three mad mad. No? Where where is it? Oh, it's this one. Do I have access to that? Yes. Mad. So from last position towards the target position, uh, Step size divided by length. Step size. Let's say the length is 2000. So 2000 yeah, divided by 1000 step length. No, should be the other way around. Yeah. 
Uh, this is weird. This is not correct. That should be direction. So last position plus direction times times what? This is the distance. Technically we need Segment size divided by distance. Here we go, here we go. So if our segment size is 1000, our distance is 3000, it will be 0.3. Okay, this, this is our LERP. <laughs> so stupid. Okay. So we do 1000 F divided by distance. This is our interposition. Now, instead of doing that, we need don't accentuate with emotes. Get the messages mixed up. <laughs> uh, okay, so now we need this move along surface, I guess. So let's copy that. So our query, query, not mesh query, move along surface. Uh, what is this? Start ref. And this would be... This would actually be the previous position ref. So we need to start that. last refs, then this is start position, which is last position in our case. Move target is interpose. Filter result visited. Ah, uh, crap. Another list. So we have that result. Now, yeah, we do this enter position. Equals results, but we also need, we're not going to update the polygons anymore. Uh, we need to get the poly height.
Can you just copy that? What? Okay, so we have our point. Now we need to add that to the path. By the way, the path. Uh, where is it? Here, path. Oh, I see. Yeah, this should be different then. This I shouldn't be used to store the path, but instead we need the path length. Mm. Yeah, let's set this to zero. And then when we add another point here, yeah, we do it like that. But we also need um, another check. Before adding every el any element here, we need to add another check. So actually, let me copy it this and paste it here we get uh Movement type. Uh, movement type. Oh my god. This one. So we need this before that. Oops. So we need to move this thing up here. So now last position is our enter position. Path length equals path length. No, this should be different. Actually, no, this is our max path length, right? Crap, I already removed that piece of code. Let me see. Nav mesh. Yeah, path length. Yeah, this indicates that we've reached the end of the path. Also, this thing should be here as well. And this check should be there as well.
I don't have the partial now though. You know what, this is incorrect. We, we shouldn't do this right here. I think. Should do that in the... In the... Where is it? In here. But here it would be much more complex because we have a single array to work with where we store the path and we would just have to like um, expand this path. Oh no. This will break the in water movement because now it would be much, much easier to reach the end of the path. Actually, the limit is 32, or if I remember correctly. Yeah. Fault max path now is 32, so it's 32,000. Should be good enough. So let me see. Um, we iterate over the straight path. Oops. Here we need to iterate over the straight path length. So we iterate over the straight path. Uh, we assign the last poly ref if we need to. We calculate the movement type for the ref. Um, so now if, if, uh, if it's first item, we just skip it. We calculate the height and we put it there. If we reach the limit, then we just return true. Actually, this incomplete is now not going to work correctly. Okay, we will handle that later. But okay, if it's the first path that we just add it normally. For the second iteration, we run this while loop. Um, and we do this current position minus last position. Uh, is our direction, this is our distance. If distance is less than 1000, then we don't need anything, we break from the loop and we add the point normally. If this is greater than 1000, then we need to split it. So what we do, we interpolate the position from last position in this direction for this distance, okay. We execute this move along surface. We get the result. Actually, this is bad because this will skip any any points along the way. So this distance should be limited. 
Ah, it, it is limited. It is limited. So yeah, from the last position to the current position, if this is too long, oh my god, then we cannot skip the points. But okay, from last position to this position, um, Novel on surface, sure. Actually, it's I, probably this is gonna work. Then um, we adjust the height coordinate. This should be in for interposition. And this should be visited always, I don't know, I guess visited zero. No, I have no idea. No, this is probably not the correct thing March corridor start move moved the hell yeah I just realized that I don't know the result in position reference. The reference IDs of the polygons visited during the move. Maybe that's the last polygon? Yeah, it's the last one. Okay. So here, instead of using your refs, instead of using your refs, we use visited, oops, visited last element of the visited. And this would also indicate the movement type. Oh no. So I guess we need... Oof, okay, one sec. So we move that one back to where it was. And we need the same thing. My God, please select correctly. We need it here. Oh my god. Where was 
was this optimization that I removed. Now I need it back. Oh my god. Like there was a create path node method. I don't see it anymore. I, I need it back because this is the a common code basically. This and this. And I don't want to recreate it from scratch. Yeah, it was here, create path node, but where is the method itself? Oh wait, I think I still have it. Yes, I have it. Ha, ah, great. So I still have it, so I can just use create path node movement type uh, right here. And right here. Oops. Wait, what? Oh yeah, that that's not the thing that I needed. This one. And then this one. So create path node, but here we use uh this can be gone. And this can be gone. And this get poly height can be moved to create path node, I guess. But for now we're gonna skip that. So this this is correct one. Then here we do create path not using this intermediate position. Not refs, we would have to do this visited. Why didn't that work? Here we go. So create path node, that looks good. Get poly height. Yeah, we can technically just move this one inside the create path node. That would be better. So let's do that uh, like this. We, uh, how do we cut? Shift delete. Shift D, I mean, uh, and we need to put it right here. So query, where is the query? Where is the query? Oh no, we need to supply the query. Okay, okay, then never mind. That's fine. So. Let's check now again. So when the distance to this current position from the last position is too big, we create interpolated position. 
using this move along surface we basically revalidate it re, re um we normalize it let's say then we update the height and we add that to our path we store that new one as the last position if we reach the maximum allowed path then we then we just return true okay um otherwise we go back to this while loop and we do the same until our distance is less distance between last position and this point position is less than 1000 then we just break uh, and then we add that position directly okay we still need to fix this we need to fix this Oof. we need to add it here So path, path line minus one is incomplete. So this one happened after we've reached the end of the path array. And this should be indicated that it's either, either partial or Oh no. Oh yeah, okay. So it's either a partial or uh the flags is not the last flag. So this thing we need this thing. So, uh, is incomplete means it's either partial initially, so even the straight path failed, or the flags of the currently processed point um, is not the end. Now, here, if we manage to hit that here, that means that we added intermediate point just now. And that means that always means that it's incomplete. Oops. Okay, so if we had to return within this while loop, then this explicit, uh, this always means that we uh, have an incomplete path. Uh, if we had to end here, we could actually add the final path. So we need to check if it's partial or we've reached the end. And if we return here, that means that we actually process the, the whole straight path. Okay, let's see if that actually works. I have very low expectations. Don't think it's going to work, but we can try. We can try. Yeah, now our path building is completely different from what it was before. 
and we should have segments of 1000. So let's check Prantera. Our guy was slightly out of sync, but that's okay. Looks like it works. Somehow. No way. Like for real, it works. Does work. Okay. Let's do another test. Let's test from here. Spawn a Pekui right here. To here. We have just two points. Mm, that's weird. That's weird. Shouldn't be just two points. Okay, it doesn't work. Ah. Uh. Why? Also, we need to assign this last position. right here but that shouldn't be the problem looks like we have something else going on so okay let's save here Exit. We need to disable all the spawns, including that that one. But for some reason. It was working for um, for the Mr. Pit uh, pathfinding. Probably it just doesn't do the intermediate paths. Not sure why. Not sure why. So if we do straight path here, okay, that's good. Actually, if we put a monster right here and stand right there, it should split, but it doesn't. We have just two points. One is the starting point, right? 85. Yes, that's the starting point and this is the end point. So it doesn't split for some weird reason. Uh, let's see why. Let's do the debug. 
patch. Another match. Here we go. So, <clears throat> our straight path consists of two points. Okay, good. Let's go. We we'll have something weird going on. We we'll have moved to position running. Crap. Why? Did I disable everything? Probably not. Hopefully it's not going to try and find the path. No, okay, good. Yeah, now we have a single thread going on. Okay, so this is the first position. We skip that, we adjust the height, sure. We add that to the path, we incremented the path length, now it's 1. Okay, last position is now that one. Actually, those are equal. Uh, what is the path size, actually? 24. Why 24? Why not 32? That That's weird. I need to uh, set it back to uh, 32. But okay. We have that. This is the last reference. Okay. I is not equal to 0. Now we go into this while loop. So, current position. Oh my god. It's the, the units. I see. So it's not 1000, it's... Uh, it should be... Um, convert to recast 1000F. Should be like that. Yeah, technically it should be 10. Okay, uh, let's restart. <laughs> now it should work, finally. Because, yeah, we had 1000 units where we should have uh, 10, only 10. So that explains a lot, but now we potentially can have some big problems. Sure, let's see. Now the, the actual split and logic should run. So let's say here, 
Yeah, this is a small range, 354. This is good. Now here, 887. This is still within the limits. This though should split. Yes. So now we have one 2000 units away. Another one 1000 units away. Third one. Eighteen hundred units away. The hell? Okay, we have something weird going on here. Okay, let's debug. But already it's trying to do something, that's good. So this should be our first path. We shouldn't do anything. Yes, that's good. We assign last position to this position. Now the next one is the final. Okay. Now we go into this while loop. So this position minus this position. This is the direction. This is the distance. 20. Okay, so distance is greater than 10, then we interpolate. So 10,000 divided by... So 1,000 divided by 2,073. Let me double check. Point forty eight. That's good. We have our intermediate position. We adjust the height. Sure, we create a path node. We set the last position to this new intermediate position. We go to the next loop. Position minus last position distance. 10. Good. We interpolate again. So that would be the third one. That one. This is weird. This one is weird. So we try to interpolate. So let's see, what did we get in the result? By 552. No, that, that's why. Uh, 85533. Yeah. This one's incorrect. Actually, maybe no. I need another client. No, I can't. But okay, let's see. Now the distance is eight, yeah. So we overshot somehow. From last position into the direction. Why did we overshoot it? Let's do a slightly closer range. This one's correct. This one's correct.
But this one is not. So it's only when we go to the second loop, then we have a problem. Why do we have a problem? We don't update the position. We do update the last position, but that's the intended way. But okay, now let's debug again. So this is the first position, this is good. It goes back actually. It goes back. So this is the final point, we do the, our first interpolation. So distance is 20.74, okay. Just a double check, our value, well, no, not, not this. I can't go into this mad method, okay. Um, can I see what get get returned? Mm, weird, but okay. So we get our interpolation. This is eight six seven two. Eight six seven two. It's this one. This is the correct point. We add it as a node. We assign the last position. Eight six two seven or seven two. Eight six two seven. Yeah. Okay. That's good. We go back to the loop. So now last position is 8627. Sure. The target position is still 8735. Uh, yes, this is our target position. Distance 10.74. So 10.74, 10 divided by 10.74 should be 0 0.93. Why do we have this direction with negative values? So this is our target position, minus last position. This is the direction, it's negative. Oh, uh, the other two are negative, but the Z, the Z is not the height axis, I still confuse those. But okay, that that's good, that's good. We have that. So technically... This interposition... Eight, seven, two, seven. Why eight, seven, two, seven? Yes, 8727. Seven. That's the correct one. 8727 seven, is, is almost what we need. So the interpolation was correct. But 
This is not correct. I see. I see. I see where, where the problem is. Okay. 2k more. <laughs> Farming for the job. <laughs> so, yeah, I forgot that I also need to update the last refs. We need to update not only the last position, but also the last refs. Yeah, that's the problem. The last refs equals visited at one. And here we also need to do that. Last refs equals refs. Okay, we should be good. So let's check close range. Okay, we're good. Medium range. Okay, we also got good. Yes. Now it actually divides by 1000 so our total range is 2188 and then the second point is 1188 away from me the third one is 188 and the final one is basically my position okay now let's try and see if we have uh, uh, the height difference so Let's see here, what path do we have? We have a straight path here. Mm, okay. What if we go here? Okay. Does it go up? Yes, it does go up. Looks accurate so far. Okay. But what if we go down here? We have five different points. Yes, it does go up. It does go up on this um, bridge. This is perfect. But yeah, now our path is basically consists of important nodes where we need to turn and segments of 1000. So here it goes up on the bridge, then back 760, then 685 and then this is my position okay so this looks good so far let's try to make it run actually Don't use your skills, just go. Okay. 
That, that looks good. Uh, we need a wolf. I forgot what the idea of the wolf. Okay, here. So let's put a wolf down here. And let's try to aggro it from up here. Okay. Oops. Fell from the bridge. Uh, what is that? Oh no. Oh no, it's stuck. Why? Why is it stuck? It looks like it's actually stuck uh, on the server side. Let me try to run away. No, it was stuck on the client side. I thought they fixed that. It was stuck on the client's side, huh? Again, I, I, I accidentally jump, jumped over the bridge. Also, my speed is too big for the correct movement prediction. What's going on? Did it lose the aggro? Yes, it did lose the aggro and also we have a client side this thing. Why is that keeps happening? really weird but okay I want to test other NPCs first maybe it would be easier to find what's wrong or maybe there is nothing wrong and it's just on the client side so I think it was test 4 no test 3 actually I'm not sure maybe not test 3 let me see. Yeah, it is test three. Okay, you. Are you moving correctly? Looks good so far. Yeah, looks very good so far. Let's wait for another turn.
Okay, this looks good actually. Are you seriously running Windows XP? No, I'm not. This is like the an overlay channel theme. Um, but yeah, hello, Particle Life. How are you doing? Welcome to the stream. But no, I'm running Windows 10. <laughs> That's just an overlay. Display is just stream information. Uh, hello, hello. Um, Max Z Cat, how are you doing? Yeah, this this looks good. Uh, I'm not sure what was wrong with with the wolf up on the bridge. Probably that's just the client side synchronization. I didn't test that before this change. Uh, let's spawn a wolf right here and try to run uh, with speed 1, 1400. Okay, so far so good. I just saw a small teleport on the client side to synchronize the movement. But yeah, this looks good. I don't see any problems here. So maybe that was just some kind of glitch on the client side uh, when it tried to navigate back down under the bridge. So another test that we need to do is on this map. Is this a game you're playing through or make? And this is the game that I'm trying to revive. This is not necessarily my work, but um, yeah, I'm... How do I describe this? Um, so the original developers of this game abandoned the project in closed beta stage. And yeah, they basically closed the project. They didn't want to continue working on it. But there is a community that wants this game to succeed. And what I'm trying to do is I'm using the original game client, although it's highly modified. Um, and also I've built the server infrastru infrastructure from scratch. And so yeah, this is what I'm doing. Um, you can, you can, um, basically click on that link and see more details. Um, but yeah, this is something that I'm working on. This is not just a playthrough. So we need another wolf here. And let's try to run from it on this location. So there were some problems um, on this hills. The monster would often get stuck. But yeah, so far looks good. About the rocks and the tree. Oh, I lost the aggro. Okay, this looks good. There, there was a small teleport, but that's okay. And here, yeah, when when the monster changes direction, often that sometimes ends up uh, with the clan side teleport, but that's okay. For now, that's good enough. Uh, say you're hosting the server. Does it mean the game is multiplayer? Yes, this is MMORPG. 
So this is not just multiplayer, this is massively online multiplayer. And everyone can see everyone on the server. Um, so yeah, this is a very complex project. I would never recommend anyone to work on MMORPG alone and try to build this server for an MMORPG. This is something that they've been doing for a lot of years. I think it was like 13 years already, uh, depending on um, what you count um, as the beginning. But yeah, this is a really long project and starts to come together. We have that uh, the servers running already in closed beta. There is just not a lot of content and it's pretty hardcore right now, hardcore. So it's not very player friendly. Does that mean there's other variants of this game out there being hostant like yours? Uh, not anymore. As far as I know, all private servers that existed before are closed already. And yeah, the official servers are closed since 2008. Or maybe not, maybe just 2009. They did keep the servers running for a little bit, although they were crashing constantly. But they didn't update them since 2008, so yeah. But okay, this looks good. It's just... I'm not sure now if we will have correct in-water movement, because now we are basically limited to 32 path nodes. And this is now... can be a problem. How many devs are with you? Currently I'm working alone, but from time to time some people do help me, um, but mostly with graphics, because I cannot draw, I cannot do 3D modeling, animate and stuff like that. So sometimes people do help me with that, but all the programming is basically on me. Very sorry if I'm bumping you with questions. I uh, just find it very interesting. Yeah, no problem. I'm I'm glad to answer any questions. This is this is totally fine. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. And this is why I'm streaming, so I'm not sitting there alone, running away from from wolves. But yeah, looks like the movement is good enough. It's just... Um, yeah, first of all, we need to, to double check that we indeed have the path limit of 32, because I don't think that's the case. We do have it uh, set to 32 right here. But I'm not sure that we are actually using the default value. Huh. We should use it, but why did I see the 24 limit? Hmm. Do you work on other games? No, this is my only project. I do plan to um, work on some other projects in the future, but for now I'm focused on this one. I want to make it at least more or less playable. It's already more or less stable, uh, but yeah, it's not very player friendly. So I really want to fix that and add some more content so the game is actually interesting to play. So, there was one weird problem. Here, so... Where is the path, right? 
Ah, that's not 24. We have more. Yeah, we have 32. Okay, good, good. We have Don't 32. Don't tell me you're tonight. following me. Following you? Uh, thank you for the follow, uh, Max is a cat. Thank you, thank you. Do you do any freelance work as a dev? Uh, my day job is a web developer. So I develop e-commerce websites for money. And this is my pet project. But no, uh, I, I've never worked as a game developer professionally. This is just my hobby. So yeah, looks like we have 32 nodes, which is good. That should be enough for even complex paths. Would you consider it? Uh, yes, if I would find a, a nice opportunity. But yeah, so far me and game dev have some weird, um, how do you say it? I don't know, uh, I can't remember the word. Sorry, English is not my native language. Sometimes I can get stuff. Yeah, relationship. We're in a relationship. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I did have like a couple of opportunities to end up in game dev professionally, but yeah, for different reasons, I ended up just working in web dev. I started as a web developer, um, but yeah. What was I talking about? I know, I'm, I'm still thinking about the wolves. Um, but yeah, basically I started as a web dev and uh, that was a pretty straightforward path for me to continue working in the web development. Um, and the game dev, yeah, it's just something that I like to work on. Because, yeah, I don't think you can find so much interest in tasks uh, when it comes to development uh, as you can find in the game dev. Here you can basically recreate uh, the whole world in the in the code as a model. So yeah, that's fun. <clears throat> so um we need to try one of the longer paths that we tested before. Um, actually, I think I can just relog. Probably I am saved uh, down in the dungeon. Let me see. Oh crap, yeah, I did your save here. Well, I guess we need to go into the dungeon manually. So, um, let's go there. So, since the game is older, does that mean it's only C? Can you use blueprints? Uh, no, this is a very old Unreal Engine project. Uh, there was no blueprints back in the days. Uh, there were Unreal scripts though. So it's not all C++, it's mostly in C++. Uh, but sometimes um, you could write some, some logic in... One second, I'm gonna show you. In scripts like... Like this. So yeah, old Unreal Engine had a uh, specific language written just for uh, specifically for it, and you could write some scripts in this Unreal script, and you could package that and distribute it without re recompiling the whole game. So assuming that the developers of the game would put a lot of logic in the scripts, you could modify the behavior of the game. Um, and create some mods like that. 
use any real scripts. But yeah, it's mostly the client side is mostly C++. My server side um, infrastructure is built on C sharp. It runs on .NET Core. Well, now it's called just .NET, and it runs in Docker. And theoretically, it can run in Kubernetes, but I don't run it in Kubernetes. I need to adjust my infrastructure a little bit to make it work in Kubernetes. But yeah, server is in C sharp, client is in C. So let's spawn a rat right here. I forgot the ID. Ten one forty seven, I think. Yes. Okay. And let's test if it still can find us. Actually, wait, I need to execute the navmesh command first and see the actual path. Navmesh 20. Okay. Wait, what? What is this? We have a zero vector. This is bad. And it's only 20 nodes. It's not like we've hit the 32 nodes limit. Um, okay, what would happen if I... Oops, oops. Almost hit the red. Uh, what would happen if I aggro it? Yeah, looks like we do have some problem here. Probably gonna get stuck or go to the zero vector. Which is even worse. Well, so far it goes here. Huh. Interesting. So what was that? Uh... For today, you're working on enemy targeting and tracking. Uh, I've been working on this feature, the pathfinding feature, like obstacle avoidance and trying to find a correct path to the target through complex uh, zone geometry. I've been working on that for probably more than two months already. Uh, main implementation is done, but yeah, there are some weird bugs popping up here and there. And I'm trying to fix that, and in the meantime I'm trying to finish scales for a bunch of monsters that I didn't finish yet. So yeah, something like that. Okay, this, this was weird. We did have a weird path note. So I think I need to save here and restart the server without any spawns. So again, let's spawn a rat right here. Oops, 
You get stuck on a plank. So, nav mesh command. Yeah, we still have that weird final node at the zero vector. So what's that about? Let's attach to the process. And let's actually place a breakpoint right here. I want to investigate the, the path first. So the path length is 20, yes. So this looks good, this looks good. Let's go back from 20. Ah, I think I know what's happening. No, maybe I don't. So minus thirty six seventy six. Um, minus thirty six seventy six. Minus forty eight six fifteen. Yeah. So this is my coordinates. Minus sixteen seventy six. So the path node number nineteen is the actual final point, but for some reason. We did increment the path length somewhere without adding the the, uh, the other the the actual path node. So we will start from zero. Let do all the pixel art artwork and animations yourself on your Twitch page. On Twitch page. Uh, like the art artwork on the Twitch page is just uh, Windows XP windows. Uh, if you're talking about the characters that you can see uh, on the bottom of the stream, that's Ragnarok Online 1 characters. So yeah, that's from another game. And basically you can uh, collect some points and by different avatars of different uh, classes of that game and also some decorations uh, but yeah i i didn't um draw all these all these sprites so this is weird because Yeah, I have no idea how that's possible. So let's try to debug that step by step. Wait, what's going on? Why can't I continue execution? Changes applied? Did they modify something? Don't think so. So let's start from the beginning and let's build a path. So we're processing our first node. So this should be skipped. Yes. So right now path length is zero and the path should consist of empty vectors. Correct. So we create a new one. Now we have that point and the path length is, should be one. Yes, good. Now to the next node. Path length is two. And we assign that. Yes. Mm. 
next iteration. Okay, good. Path length is three. So what's wrong here? So far everything is good. Okay, we did break. Now, uh, path length is four. So element number three should have IDs. Okay, we have that. Uh, now we store the point itself. Path length is five. And then the path four. Yeah, now contains all of that. So that's good. That's working. Next point. Path length is still five. That's good. Six. So now if we go to the element ID five, yeah, we have the data. We've added the point. So now this is eight. This one does have the date. We can just skip this up to until until then the last one, I'm pretty sure. So right now we are on the ninth. Index. Eleven. Thirteen. Let's double check. So this should be filled in. This should not. Yeah. Okay. Good. Fourteen. This should be fifteen. Sixteen. We have our data. Seventeen. Eighteen. Four. But so far so good. I'm not sure what's wrong with the last one though. So this is good. Actually wait, I can just check the straight path first. So this actually contains some position. That's good. Is partial false. So the straight path should be correct. So, okay, let's continue. So this was 19. This was 19. Element index 18 is fine. 19 is empty. That's correct. Now I go to the next one. So this should be the last one. So I is 13. The count is 14. So yeah, this is the last point. The refs is zero. Yes, this is the last point. Then we go into this while loop. The distance is fine. 
So basically, we work on this position. So we should assign this position So here, path length is 20, and the path of index 19 contains some data. Ah, so this is correct. And we finished. It's not as partial. So this actually builds the correct path. So if we take a look here at element 19, we have data. Path length is 20. So we have correct path coming from this method. Huh. There's probably something wrong with just this uh, command because it uses this build path directly. So if we step out, so here we have our path. So path length is 20 and path 19 actually contains some data. Ah, ah I see what's wrong. Yes, I didn't change that. So this is just the command. The command was incorrect. So instead of using this, yeah, we cannot use this because this basically would mean that the end of the path segment that we created here, instead we need to use this path length property. So it should be path length minus one. And the same here. Oops, where is my minus one? In here. Okay, now we should be good. Probably I just never tested this properly on a very long path. So now let's restart the server. <clears throat> And that means that we can now, we have the same limit of the path nodes. We can now try to find a point where we could exceed the path limit and see what's going to happen. But first, let's see, let's check that this works. Yes, 36.45, yes, uh, minus 48.615, 48, no. Oh, I know, I'm not standing on the nav mesh. So if we do it now, it should be 35.66. 48509 48509 minus 1676 Yes, perfect. Now it actually goes directly to me. So what if I build path here? I have 23 nodes. 
what if we go here? 32 nodes. And I don't think this is my position. Let's see. Minus 39, 79. Yes, 39, 79. Why am I so happy about that? No, you shouldn't. 47, 6, 14. Okay, this is, oh yeah, I, I, I could have just looked into this. So if we manage to attack this red from here, technically, I don't think it's gonna reach us because it should go all the way up the stairs and then all the way up there or even uh, up there until it manage, manages to find the actual path down here. Don't th mm, crap. It's not fast enough. Drops the aggro. Uh, what can we do about that? Would wolf be fast enough? Let's put it here. 108, I think. Yes. Okay, maybe this one is fast enough. Wait, how how did Oh my god, I, I actually executed a couple more spawn commands. Also, I need the second client to test this properly because the wolf is somewhere there. Yeah, I don't think it managed to either reach me or maybe even it lost the aggro. So let's do another test. So let's spawn a wolf right here. And now I need a second client so I can watch where the wolf is going. So now let's aggregate. I think it's just gonna lose the aggro. Yeah, 
Yeah. Okay. What can we do about that? We can maybe let it run faster. Uh, status effects. Wait, I need sprint. It was somewhere here. Here it is. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter which one. So we're going to assign sprint to this wolf for forever. Oh. I can't do that forever. Let's do, I don't know. Something like that. Just 227 hours. Okay. don't actually think this is going to work. Maybe instead of sprint, we need to set something different, like dash, for example. Oh, it's actually pretty fast. Maybe this is going to be enough, actually. Wow, it actually managed to reach me even with this limit. But how is that possible? Did it rebuild the path at the end of the path? So does that actually work? I need to see if that's the case. So I need this to be visible. But yeah, I think it actually works, even with this limitation. Probably just rebuilds the path when it reaches the end of the current path. At least that's how it should work. Okay, now let's spawn the wolf. I also need to add that aura. Thank <laughs> you. 
So I did build the path one time. I needed to include the count, but okay. So, so far it's following the initial path. Now it's build another path. Okay, perfect. So yeah, it does rebuild the path from the beginning and now it goes back. Okay, so that works. That actually works. And we can use this 32 nodes limit. Perfect. So yeah, I think this is it. The monster is actually following the path correctly. But okay, I definitely would need to do more, more testing um, because I'm pretty sure the fish monsters would not like this change. I don't know, we will see. But yeah, for for now this is good enough. So yeah, I'm gonna call it a day. Let's find someone to raid real quick. Who do we have? Oh, we have one person that we haven't raided in a really long time. So yeah, let's let's do the raid. They are actually just starting. Or maybe now? I don't know. We will see in a moment. This this looks interesting. So yeah, uh, this is it for today. I'm going to be back tomorrow uh, with some more game development. Um, but yeah, we did some good progress today. Probably this is actually the proper implementation of Pathfinder that I was looking for. Uh, I'm not sure. We would need to test it a little bit more. But yeah, so far this looks good. Um, and also, yeah, I did a lot of fixes on the client side of stream before today's stream and that looks good as well so yeah i think mm, tomorrow uh maybe we will do some more testing and then continue with the monster skills um so yeah thank you everyone for watching i hope to see you next time and bye bye